Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Thing I Love Most show with myself, Noel Barbon. Um, welcome once again. Uh, so this is week two of our um, latest season. I think we're actually on season four now, but we, we've had a few seasons of not really doing much. So so here we are once again. Um, we're happy after the weekend's win, obviously. So um, lots to talk about. Um, as always, I have my, my partners in crime alongside me. And now in a new format that we're using here, um, we've got them alongside me, literally. It's like a back three, uh, which is quite funny. So on that, on my left-hand side, I mean, we're talking like stage left or what we're talking about. Anyway, I have Mr. Lee Curtin. Um, welcome, Lee. Once again, how are you doing? Are you okay? I'm very good, mate. Very, very good. Good. Sounding better than last week as well. Glad to hear it. Um, apologies for the sound issues and the, the technical issues that we did have last week. We're still sort of getting back into the swing of things with everything. Um, so, yeah, we're slowly starting to, to get back to where we should be in terms of performance levels, just as the team is, I suppose. This is what it's all about. It takes a bit of time. Um, and Kofi, um, once again, so where about you, Kofi? You're back in, are you down in London at the moment? I am. I'm at the Holiday Inn in North Greenwich, working this, at the O2 tomorrow. Love that. Love that, love that. Living the dream, living the absolute dream. Um, perfect. All right, well, um, I think what we should do is by start off, by starting off, um, is obviously talk about the weekend's game. Um, I went to the game. Um, really, really good to be back, uh, obviously, um, after the summer. Um, I had a bit, of a, a bit of a pub call, actually. It was quite fun, to be fair. Started off at the ship, which I've um, never been to before. Um, I think I have maybe just in the front part, but this time we're in the garden part. And I have to big up the manager for doing this because he was putting on free burgers. So I need to big him up and I need to say anyone who wants to go to the ship uh, on a match day, they're basically doing free cheeseburgers in the back area in the garden. So quality stuff, nice burger. And um, that was fun. Um, and then afterwards, um, my friends, Anthony and Jeremy, the two crazy people that you guys know very well, um, they wanted to take me to the Bill Nick. So I went to the Bill Nick again. Very, very good fun. Um, it was like really, really good house music. And they had a DJ called Jesse James there who was smashing out the tunes. But then everyone left at about eight o'clock. It was really weird. Just everything just died. Um, and so we went to the Blue Coats, which is our usual haunt, um, just on Tottenham High Road by Bruce Go Station, um, because we know the managers there and um, we had lots of fun. So that was the social aspect of the day. Um, but more on to the football matter. So what I thought we'd do is um, what a new thing that we've introduced this season is to basically get a little bit of a fan's view, fan's perspective um, from the opposing team. And obviously we had Jake, who was brilliant last um, week, who was giving us a little bit of a um, a preview and just giving us a bit more information about Southampton um, and what his thoughts would be on the, the game in advance. He thought it was actually going to end up 3-2. Um, and when we were 1-0 down, I would actually thought it might be, but it wasn't. Um, we were, we did end up four winners. And um, it's time to have a listen to what Jake had to say about the weekend's game. Hey guys, just my thought with the game. Um, as I said in the podcast, 3 2 wasn't going to work at all. First thing I noticed, the defence was all over the place, um, especially when we tried to play out from the back, which was quite surprising because Spurs just overloaded the box, couldn't get the ball, couldn't get the ball out of our half to start off with. It was more of taking the touch wide, getting it up the pitch. Um, I think Saints gifted Spurs three goals, but it's a bit harsh because Spurs did actually play all right for the whole afternoon. Uh, well, more than all right. They played fantastically. They dominated the game. Um, then, obviously, when I said about a target man, that proved it. Uh, we, we, we tried to give the service and there was no one in the box to actually head the ball, touch it down. That's why I thought Che Adams would actually start the game because he was. I think he's quite a strong player. I think Adam Armstrong got bullied a little bit. It just confused me with Ralph's tactical decisions, changing the back five, two substitutions out of that back five or back three, as they say. Um, Gineppo, I thought he had an all right game, to be fair. But I understand why he started him, but he shouldn't have started him. Perot should have started because he's actually a left back. Why he brought Jan Valery off as well? I actually think Jan Valery done all right, um, but it's what it is. He he decided to do it. Took off Romeo as well, who was a strong stronghold in the midfield. I just it, it, it I was just confused by at least the seventy fifth minute. One positive from the game, I know one of you said James Ward Prowse likes playing against Spurs. That that just proved it with that um good half volley. I thought it was a great goal. I don't think any keeper would have stopped that. Um, I don't know if Ralph decided to give up at the second half, but that's what sort of baffled me. We're only 2-1 down. We could at least try and get a point out of it, but it is what it is. It's done now. 
hopefully we can go back to the training ground and figure a couple of things out. Uh, just a final one. Thank you for inviting me to your podcast. It was brilliant and good luck for the rest of the season. Thank you, Jake, for that video. That was very, very kind of you. And um, you were very much welcome on the show and you were a great addition. So we will happily speak to you later on in the season when we do have the away fixture at St Mary's. So um, some interesting points, actually. And that, that's why I really do like this little part of the show that we've introduced again, because I think it does give you a little bit of insight as, as to the sort of the game from the fan perspective, from the opposing fans. Because, I mean, to be fair, obviously, I didn't really think about their formation that much, but I think... The way they did come out second half, I, I, I didn't think they were, I didn't think they'd given up, to be fair. I just thought it was one of those things where we just were a little bit more on the front foot. I think we were very lucky, not lucky, but I think we we, we benefited from the, the quick succession of the goals in the first half. And again, also, I suppose, in the second half, to be fair, once that, obviously, that fourth goal went in, I, I thought it could be quite a bit more than that, to be fair. I was surprised that we didn't get another one. Um, so, overall thoughts on the game. Um, I'm going to go to you, Lee, first. Um Let's start with the, the lineup because I think most of us were hoping for a little bit of change. Um, and I think the one thing that I suppose that we could say, and I know the pundits have spoken about it in various um, comments and um, realms over the past few days, is obviously what new signings do do is obviously creates competition. And therefore, that the players did start, even though it was pretty much the team that finished last season they know that there are more players to come off the bench to fight for those positions. Um, Cecil Young in particular, obviously, now is obviously in competition with Perisic. He's getting a lot of advice from Perisic from the sounds of things, but he also knows that he needs to perform. Um, and as he did, I thought, I thought he had a good game. I thought he had a good game. He was a little bit more attacking-minded than we, we wanted. Um, and then Royale, I mean, again, credits where it's due. He, he, he did get up the pitch he did do his thing I mean I'm still not going to say he was man of the match and I'm still not going to say he's my favorite player because I think a lot of what he did was quite lucky but still you can't you can't criticize someone for getting two assists in a game and yeah. you know that so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold my tongue when it comes to him and I'll let you do something more than that if you want to <laughs> so, yeah. so were, were you initially surprised at that um at that selection there wasn't any new signings within it do you, do you know what? As soon as it was uh, released, um, <laughs> I kind of looked at it and it's just like a <gasps> like a bit of a jaw dropping moment. Like we've just made six signings and none of none of them are none of them are involved in the starting eleven. And then actually, you think about it, and it was um, it was a bit of a masterstroke, really. It was it was very clever, very clever management. Um, and as a lot of people have alluded to since that that team did finish the season really really strong. Um, and probably Southampton was setting up, uh, you know, thinking that there may be slight tinkering with the side and different changes. Um, and maybe we caught Southampton off guard um, just because we have uh, different personnel to choose from this time around. So I, f- I think it's actually a masterstroke in the end um, because you could say that a team that finished strongly, but that was that was three, that was three months ago, two two months ago. So you know, who knows what sort of pre-season they've all had, in all fairness. Um, so, yeah, uh, great, great call on the manager's part. And again, just that just that touch of class that we've been missing with certain managers in, in, in years gone by. Just, you know, not changing for the sake of changing. Um, I think he caught them off guard. Um, and I think the boys went out and, and did, did a really, really good job. Um, we spoke about Sessegnon and Perisic last week. Um, we, we spoke about how Perisic would probably... Uh, be of great benefit to Sessegnon. And I think in post-match interviews, Sessegnon said, you know, uh, Perisic told him before the game, get up the pitch, play high. Um, and actually Cole told him just before the goal, push on, make sure you're getting in the box, at the, you know, get on the end of those crosses. Um, so, you know, the competition that's, is one that's thing. Not, that's not rocket science, is it? We know that. And every, everyone knows that. Everyone can see that. I don't understand why it takes a new signing to, to, to tell him uh, to do uh, that. Do you know what I mean? Surely, I surely, really surely, surely, quite, surely the coaches have been yeah. saying that from day um, one, especially especially when you're playing at home, because we don't well, need to have five at the back. So you're you're literally you're literally a winger in those home games against teams that are going to come and sit or that are going to have. It not may much even be. Yeah. I know I need to push up. Shall I push up? Oh, I don't know. I've got these voices little sort of devil and angel on my shoulder but then Perisic says yes push up and he's like okay I'll do it That's which crazy. is just a confidence thing 
Absolutely. Always got to be a confidence thing. And he's still a young lad. Um, and we alluded to the fact that he's had four or five managers since he signed. You know, some have chucked him in, some have pulled him out. Some have, you know, just shook him about. He hasn't had the complete run. And actually now you've got a manager who's going, no, get up the pitch. Don't worry about what, you know, just make sure you track back. Um, but get up the pitch beyond the end of things. And then you've got somebody who's got years of European experience internationally um, as well saying, get up the pitch, do it. You know, somebody who's playing in the same position as him, but is actually encouraging him and is there to say, this is what's going to make you a, play- this is what's going to make you a top player. This is what's going to take you to the next level. So, yeah, it's purely a confidence thing. And at home, it's all very well at home. You know, you've got 60,000 fans there. Away, you know, there's three or 4,000, depending. But 60,000 fans, when it all goes wrong or you're at error, you know, you make an error, it's not a nice place to be. Um, so, actually, you know, sometimes some players will tell you they prefer playing away. Um, mm, but, look, I it's, I, I look there's, a, there's a glimpse. There's a glimpse of what's to come. Uh, from Sessegnon, he did it. He did it with Fulham. That's what you know. That's what made people look at him in the first place. Um, let's hope that a steady manager um, and a quality player in his position, giving him advice week in, week out, day in, day out. Um, you know, uh, let's let's hope that pays off. Um, but that was a glimpse of what's to come against teams like Southampton. And no disrespect to them. Uh, Jake alluded to the fact that they're probably not going to have much goal threat. Um, and it was what, just a case. What was the deal with, was the deal with Che Adams? Because I thought, I mean, I thought he had a good season last season. And obviously, Armstrong was chosen. Was he injured? Do we know what was going on? I don't know. I'm not not I too sure. Not too sure. Yeah. yeah, not too sure. I mean, the, what I will say just there is uh, that one lad that they signed from City, can't remember his name. He looked like a bit of a bright spark for them. He, mm. was, he was quite decent on the ball, quite brave on the ball, wanted to play. But I think we, you know, I think we, um, I think we can't aid them. You know, have a little bit of the ball. You've got to get past us. And then once we take it off, yeah, you're going to be in a world of trouble. Um, yeah. And, and uh, you know, there was no stopping that. that you know, five players of, of that calibre running at them, they was always going to be up against it. A funny thing, I suppose, the, the, the thing that has been mentioned again was the fact that we did score four goals and yet Son and Kane were not on the score sheet. I mean, Kane... Obviously, he's a slow starter, traditionally, um, notoriously. And he, I thought he had an OK game. I think he was frustrated at times. You could see that, I think. And that's when he, he gets, I think well, that's when any striker gets a bit, you know, they're not the best. They're not the best. They're not maybe not the most instinctive if they are too frustrated. They might do the wrong thing. And normally, he sort of is the opposite. Um, he did lay Son in for that shot later on. And that was a bit of a side foot from Son. Son again. Didn't have his best game. So I think it was an interesting one in terms of where the goals came from. Obviously, Sessegnon with the first, um, Dyer with the second, um, and then the, the own goal. I mean, that guy is going to have nightmares about that own goal. I don't understand. If you look at the replays, how he's managed to do that, that position, it's I mean, outstanding. It's, just, it's proper skill. It's proper skill to do that. Um, and, uh, and obviously, the final goal... Um, from my man of the match, I don't know what what you guys thought of it, but but Kulisevsky, I thought was 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 head and shoulders above everyone else, just in terms of the fact that everything seemed to be coming through him. And I mistakenly put Diaz in. Uh, uh, Diaz and Mount were my choices for the eight million midfielder in fantasy Premier League. Um, mm. Kulisevsky was one of the choices. Massive mistake, you know, in comparison to what the other two did put together. Diaz had a few shots in the Fulham game, to be fair, but still, you know. Everything was coming from Kulisevsky because he is that he is that spark. He is that creative. You know, if it doesn't just go into Son or Kane, then then it, he is the one to do something. And he he got the ball so much, and he rarely gave it away. And he was so calm on the ball, and just his, just a little bit of skills, like the little drag back that he did in the second half, and then his set, set um, Real down the right, and he just always seems to just do the right thing. I think, and that's. That that you can't say anything more about someone who is still in his early twenties and he's doing that. Um, such a full brain, like he's incredible and um, two footed as well. We had a little bit of a right foot little moment as well, which was which was always good to see because he he looks like he is so dominant on that left foot. So sometimes when he does do the right foot touches, you're like, okay, cool, All right? You're not that much of a lefty. So um, no, I, I was really really impressed with with his performance all round. I thought. Uh, I thought everyone played well, to be fair. It was one of those games that we just obviously needed to get a performance with. And to be fair, you know, the Tottenham teams of the past might not have done as well, you know, in terms of losing that goal early on against a team that we're going to sit back. You know, this team is different. This team seems to be made of some serious metal. That, and it's not even that. I think it's 
the confidence that Conte has given them to literally yeah. know that they can score. They can score and they're probably going to score, to be fair. The, the players they have in their team, and I think, I think he's instilled that in them. Um, Kofi, were you in agreement in terms of Kulisevsky's performance? Oh, without a doubt. You know, he was man of the match. Everything was going through him. And, you know, I think, as we said last week, he can find a man, you know, which which is fantastic. And it, it gives us a slightly different option. You know, the reality of that is that Kane and Son didn't score. So, you know, we had options elsewhere. We had a different outlet and a goal scorer and a goal creator, which is fantastic. I love the I love the Sessegnon goal purely for the fact that it was such a peach of a ball. Literally, Sessegnon didn't even have to do much. But the fact that Sessegnon was there, that was the key. And oh, yeah. we spoke about before in terms of in terms of obviously Perisic and, and and Conte giving him. But that is the key. If the players are going to make the runs, then he will be able to find them. And that that is now they know that then they're going to be as well more often than not. That's just another threat. So if you've got Kane and Son being like occupied in the middle, then that's just another sort of, you know, it's another another sort of thing that we have before. Which, oh, which can turn it's, it's fantastic. And the thing is, if you remember back to when Sessignon was at Fulham and just tearing up trees, he was doing that all the time. Whether he was arriving at the far post or he was driving and dribbling through into the box, he was a, attacking down the left. Mm-hmm. He wasn't and, and never has been a fully defensive left back. He's been a wing back or a winger. So it's in him and... The confidence, hopefully, is building, and and he'll show more on the park. What did you make of uh, the new signings when they did come on? I know Longley didn't have much. Um, I was trying to work out who it was. To be fair, when he was when he was stood at the right eye, I was like, I'm not really sure. But yeah, we'll go for him. Um, <laughs> um, what did you think of that? Perisic, Perisic um, had a few left foot crosses. One was a little bit deep, but I think he was. It was obvious from when he came on that was his like literally his mantra. Get that byline, well, put a cross in, which is which is exactly what we want. Um, Basuma didn't get much of a look in; he had a bit of shot towards the end, but still nice to have a run out. Obviously, both of them have been um, not not match fit recently, so I think I think a nice sort of just a nice run out for them, a nice obviously to play in front of a, um, a full house at one. I should go along with what Kurtz was saying earlier about a masterstroke because I think there was absolutely the you know set in. Uh, Southampton off guard by putting out a team they probably didn't expect. There's a bit of trust there in the players. They're like, it's like go and perform, show you what you can do. But then bringing on those players at home is great for those players. So they get a bit of a run out, as you say, in front of the 60,000. But also it tells the 11 on the pitch, these guys are ready to come on. So, you know, the game was relatively safe by that point. And mm. it was, right, just know these guys are here. And not only can they come on, they can start. Yeah. So I think it, it was a, it was a juicy looking bench. To be fair, it was a night, and that's without Richarlison as well. You know, you've got to remember. That's so. right. Yeah, that's right. The one the one thing that pleased me is um, obviously it, it was um, not it wasn't difficult for subs to make an impact, but you can see it was just about getting them on their pit on the pitch, getting their debuts out of the way, getting them in front of the fans, and if another goal came from it, happy days. So it's about kind of I felt like it was more of a bedding in process for the subs really um the one thing that has kind of stood out having a pre-season with Conte mm. is um it looks like I don't know if you noticed with Dyer's goal that it was Dyer, Romero and Ben Davies were the three yeah, in the great, box that's a great picture yeah I saw that yeah. and and you you realize now that actually everything he's drilling into them everything that he's been banging into them uh even in the short time when he got there is now starting to take shape with a solid pre-season. So when he's talking to you about a shape, when he's talking to you about this is his formation and how it works, mm. um, you can see the fruits of it already in game one after having a pre-season. Um, you know, so Son and Kane, yeah, didn't score. I think Son should have squared one to Kane just before half time and had their little uh, lovers tiff. Yeah. Um, but that apart, there was like we had we had about two or three more chances where neither of them were in the box. It had nothing mm. to do with them. So, you know, you can see that actually this overlapping, players overlapping them from the wings, from defence, from midfield. Um, there's a real, there's a real uh, tactical, you know, real tactical play coming into, coming into our game that Conte is managing to get across now. And I think we're going to start, you'll start to see the difference against like certain teams. It was, that was my, that was the most, 
that was the most pleasing thing for me to see. Mm. It looked like we understood the formation this time. Um, the most sort of it, were there any like concerns or worries for you? I know obviously it was a, it was an annoying goal to concede. I think in terms of like it could have been cleared a little bit better. I didn't think we rounded badly in terms of like you know pushing Janeka on the way. He got off the cross, like the, the, the quick ball into six yard box. But then with that deeper cross, the fact it was a bit of a bouncy half volley, Larice literally was like, it was just like, it just looked like it was slow motion. I was like, what's yeah. happening? And then it was in the net. And it was like, <laughs> I, I found that, it was, it, I just, I mean, we're not great on set pieces. I mean, obviously, the, the Southampton game last season, there was a couple of pinball moments in that first half and the Wolves game as well. It was just like really, really went through a stage of just defending like absolute numpties. But yeah. you would have thought that that was sort of out the window now. But um, I don't know. It just, it just seemed like a bit of a, a, a frustrating goal to concede, to be fair. I had a bit of an issue with Holberg. I'm not saying he had a bad game by any means. It's just in that little situation, I think he got drawn into the six-yard box. And then the ball would sort of bounced over him towards Wall Prowse. And you think, Wall Prowse is their danger man. And he's hovering on the edge of the yeah. box. Mm. Don't get drawn in. Let the centre-backs do that job. Get back on the edge of the area with him. So, you know, that, it's picking out a moment. Not saying he had a bad game. I think he had an OK mm. game. But I think mm. in that moment, he should have been aware of the midfielder he's playing against. And yeah. I think that's where we spoke last week about you know, when we was in the predictions, we said, like, typically Tottenham, we'll give them a goal. You know, we'll give them a... We'll, this will be the scoreline, but we'll give them a goal. I did, yeah. I, I was and, more confident. I said, I and, said three now, so yeah. Yeah, and that, that, was, that was a disappointing thing for me, the, 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 the quality of the goal, as, uh, as Kofi says there. That, that's Tottenham. That's, what, that's the goals we give away last year when people are going into the box, when they've been drawn away, when you see two players going into one man... In a defensive scenario, it really blows my mind at that level um, because you're saying, well, who's communicating? Who's not looking around? It, you know, it seems really bizarre. We do that quite a lot. So it's disappointing. But again, you know, the most disappointing thing, and we're not going to take him to the cleaners because, you know, he had a good game in his own funny way. Teams will continue. Teams will continue to attack us down the right as long as he's on the pitch. Uh, mm. You know, I don't need to say more than that. And that they will, they will do that. And, you know, when, when, when he plays, unfortunately, people are going to go down that side of the pitch to try and get rounders. So let, let's see how it, let's see. That was the only downside for me. Um, yeah. You know, it's last year, last season's mistakes, but, you know, there was yeah, a lot to improve on. Um, well, you spoke about predictions and it's time for us to take a look at our predictions league table that we now have once a week. And here it is. Don is in the lead there with five points, getting the correct score and the right results. And then second is Kurtz and myself uh, with three points each, having the right result, but a little bit away on the score. And further away on the score uh, was Noel. um, So he has two points. And unfortunately, Jake, our Southampton fan, thought Southampton were going to win. No score, no result, no points. And the way we've worked out our scores here is if you get the right score, it's five points. If you get the right result, you start scoring. And the difference in goals between the actual score and the score you gave gives you your point score. So as Noel was further away in the, the number of goals that were scored, he has two. There's a formula that's been worked out for this on a Duckworth, Lewis, Stern, Styley. Lots of calculations. We won't go into it today, but we'll show you a little graphic of how we worked it out another week. For now... Don's in the lead. So it's that time of the show where we look forward to this weekend's game. And this weekend is a big, big game because we do to Stamford Bridge. I've been to Stamford Bridge for the first time, actually. I've never been down there. Um, I'm so surprised. But yeah, I'm going there for the first time. Uh, looking forward to a good game. Obviously, Chelsea were our nemesis last year, like literally ruined us um, four times. And it was just, it was horrible, to be fair. We really, really got fed up with playing them and it was not something that we wanted and um yeah they really they really schooled us in a lot of ways um this was obviously before we had um the introduction of uh, Kulisevsky and Bentoncourt who obviously mm. did improve our team so we're hoping that this is going to be a different game and and Chelsea are also in a very different position to when they were at that time and um, they've lost one of their most influential players in Rudiger um and they've all obviously ships on Lukaku uh, ships on Werner 
brought in Sterling. And so it is a bit of a changed team. And um, so as always, we've got an opposing team um, podcast and YouTube star on the show. So we've got Mr. Nezar. Uh, welcome, Nezar, to the show. Um, so yes. what's, just, just generally, what's your sort of current view of, of, of your team at the moment? How, how confident are you of a good season? And are you, are you happy with the signings that you've had and signings that you've sold? Well, to be honest with you, uh, I'm, uh, you've mentioned the Rudiger thing. I'm actually happy that Rudiger, Rudiger went. You know, I don't, I, I'm personally against players that don't want to be there with a whole heart. So he wants to move on to what he calls bigger, better, greener pastures. Let him move on. we got Koulibaly. I mean, if that doesn't plug a hole, what does, honestly? Right? Am I right there? <laughs> Come on, that, we've got, that's a marquee sign. We've been trying to sign that guy for five years. I don't know what. You know, I don't know what broke the camera back this year. But we got him for it was a six-year deal or some craziness. It's interesting. You're happy, you're happy with him. Friends. And you're happy with Sterling? I like Sterling. I could see he's doing a teacher's pet. He's trying his hardest. So I'm like, oh, he's trying his hardest. It's either going to backfire on him or he's going to get the one or two goals and hopefully that'll just open up more goals and more assists. He definitely needs to get his GA above 20 this season or else we're going to get banted by Man City. If it's above 20, like 25 in all whatever, 60 games Chelsea will probably play because they always go far, then we're going to banter the Man City fans. And I've been, you know, I've been, I've been, Oh, clipping some YouTube clips. I've been going some Vice City clips. I'm <laughs> waiting. I'm going to pounce back on them. <laughs> so, what are, and what are your thoughts on the, um, the the talks of Fafana coming for like 85 million? Is that a bit crazy to spend no, that much? That on a, is. On a am boy? I not? Um, thank you. I thought I was the only person in this boat. On my channel, everyone is once for four fan. I'm, I'm thinking, this guy's of course 85 million. The only difference between him and Maguire is that he, he has seed. Speed always makes you think, oh, he can't flop. He has speed. Maguire didn't have speed, you know. He always thought maybe he has to, you know, out airily outdo everyone and score lots of goals, which they thought he was, yeah. But for Fana, we know he's not going to get goals because he got mm. think, one goal last season or two, including the Europa League or Conference League, wherever they were. Yeah, so, you know, he's fit. Everyone talks about his old leg break. You might have heard about that. He had a mm. clean break when he was young. But ever since then, he's not had one injury. So... I like that, you know, clean bit of health is a big thing. These these days, it seems no matter what, you're going to get a, a long injury list on your team. So maybe Chelsea do need backups upon backups upon backups because mm. that's what it seems what we're going to do. I feel sorry for people like Chaloba and other youths. Mm. Yeah. So what, what's, your, what's, your, what's, your, what's your thoughts for the season then? Where do you, where do you think you can go? You think you're gonna so we, we're going to sign more players. We are going to join the 300 million club. We're going to break a record. Just as I know, Todd Bailey just wants to, you know, Todd B, the American, you know, he just wants to go. I spent the most money ever. And so <laughs> once he does that, I think we'll finish top four easy. Yeah. I mean, the only thing is, pressure is going to come if we do sign De Jong and if we do get four final. We'll actually have pressure to finish above yeah. top four, you know, even win it. I doubt um, it, though. Nez, what, yeah. what's, your, what's, your, what's, your, what's your thoughts then on the first game? So, you kind of you, you kind of just pipped Everton, it seems. But yeah, I'm happy what, because yeah. if we beat them four five nil, I don't think we'll make. Maybe we might have made one more signing. Now that we right. we squeaked and we look terrible against Lampard with no striker, we're definitely going to make at least two signings minimum, and maybe even another youngster because we seem to be signing all these youngsters in the back of the, you know, stealing them from other places. I'm like, what's with all these youngers Chelsea are getting? Shouldn't be making the team for now. But I do like the team for now and for tomorrow. So I can't complain, but I think we're going to make two to three more signings. Like 320 million, 325 million have been spent by the end of this whole window. I'm looking forward to it still, yeah. And the transfer window is not slowing down at all, thanks to the mm. first week, if anything. Do you okay, think you're then... a below par performance two weeks running? <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's more than that. Since that game against that Charlotte team in America, a team that's only been around since 2018, I was, <laughs> I was worried. I was thinking, okay, when's this 4 5 nil going to come? And the next week's 4 nil to the Arsenal, bro. Right? So I was like, oh, man. And I'd made there in America. They said, make sure you don't come down. You're missing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was like, I'll stay here, man. But so, as so, what, said, so, what, so what are your thoughts on this weekend? Then obviously, um, we had a, a we had a decent we had a decent yeah. result against Southampton. Um, what are your what are your thoughts before? Just not on the game, but what are your thoughts on on the business Tottenham have done and the sort of where we we're at? With Tottenham that, with that done it. They've done it fast and proper. I, I have I, I bravo. 
But because of that result, you're you're not signing no one else now. You, I reckon Conte, he can't push the ball. The ball's be like, hey, we've just won four one, and you know you yeah, guys are a bit, you, know, a bit, that's, that's you guys need one more player. You really do. If you get one more player, then everyone's gonna be put on hiatus, you know, on, on scared mode. I, I'm sure you didn't get one of the, you know, one of Wolves' player or, or still one of Arsenal's targets, Tillsman, Tillsman. Maybe there's still even time. Don't worry, there's still time. There's definitely sure, still, yeah, I reckon, exactly. two, two more I, I mean, that's, I reckon two more signings for us as well. Yeah, you guys are legendary with the uh, last minute signings. What two, two? I don't know if you do two after four one, but if you do do two more signings and they're any decent, then this season is gonna be crazy. I'm scared of Arsenal. I'm watching their all or nothing. I'm like, what? How come we don't have an all or nothing? How come Chelsea don't have an all or nothing? You guys <laughs> had it. That's, that's what, everything's it had it. Work, from us. Bro, it's, not, it's not something, it's not a great thing it's, to have, to be fair. No, yeah. no, yeah. No, yeah. Exactly. No one's done well yeah. on that so far. I realise that. No one. Man City had a bad one on it. Uh, Liverpool had a oh bad season. God. We had the worst. So, no. Mourinho, oh, though, he's my CTV, man. I love Mourinho. <laughs> Jesus, yeah, he's might he might be good TV, but he's not good management for us anyway. Um, so let's, let's talk about the game on 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 Sunday. So what what are your thoughts on the game? How do you think it's going to go? And um, we'll wait for your prediction towards the end. But but how how do you think it's the game going to go? Do you think it's going to be a tough one? Do you think it's going to be similar to the games that we had last season, or do you think we're going to be a bit more of a different proposition? I forget you guys will be difficult. I think Chelsea are gonna are gonna play so defensive. And then Tottenham's going to, you know, see that. And that you're either going to try to break our door down or you're also going to take a, a defensive approach in Stamford Bridge. Mm. If that's the case, it's going to be a boring game. I think if it's, it's a boring, boring game, game, you guys can nick it, not us. We can't nick a boring game no more. If we could nick a boring game, we'd have had two trophies. You know that? You know? Yeah, I, I still keep thinking being, about it. I can see it, I can see it being KG and us, and us doing some in the break. I think that's a good shout. Yeah, mm. I think that's, they are going to... Sometimes I can't believe you still have Harry Kane and, and, and Son. You know, I think, oh, how has no one spent 200 mil to give us them now? It's the best duo in history. I was listening to, well, they were shared on our WhatsApp today. There was a, um, a talk sport thing on, um, and they had this Liverpool fan from London, I think he was. And he was basically trying to say that the Liverpool front three was better, much better than the Tottenham front three. And he was going through it in players. And he was saying that Firmino was better than Kane. And that basically the Yaz was better than wow. Son. They, they, they couldn't believe what he was saying. And honestly, you should see the link. I'll send you the link because it was like the, please, the, please the, the some of the, some of the comments as well. And it was all to do with the fact that his his basically his um his thinking was um that if you haven't got a trophy yeah. that you're you're not as good as players. So his thinking was basically Origi was better than Kane because he's obviously got a trophy. <laughs> he's like, he's won all the trophies, and it was just like oh my word, madness. Um, okay, so Kofi, what what do you do you agree with um uh, Naz in terms of the fact that it's gonna it's gonna be quite a tight game and then it could go on the break? Do you think Conte is gonna play like that? I think. We might be playing on the break, but I don't see it being a cagey game at all. I think we have the players that want to be on the front court, and message seems to be get forward, even to the wing backs, get forward, get high. And, you know, Kulisevsky, the way he's been playing this season and last week, um, Son, Kane, they're not players to be cagey. Uh, so I, I think we'll go for it. I'm not saying yeah. that will yeah. make sure that the result happens, but I can't mm. see us being cagey. Well, you're scaring me, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's obviously this is working. This is this is good. <laughs> uh, and uh, Kurt, what about you? How how do you see the game going? Yeah, I see. Um, I see it quite being quite similar to the games of of last season. Um, but as we've alluded to at the start, there, I think we were talking about two different outfits. Um, I don't think Chelsea are as defensively strong as they were last year. And I don't think at the moment, at this stage, they pose such an attacking threat as they did in their prime last season. Whereas us, on the other hand, I feel like we've shored up those areas of, on the pitch. Um, so for me, I see it being quite close. I see it being quite defensive. And it will be actually who breaks away the best. Um, mm. I, you know, I think, um, I think maybe Tuchel will lean on Sterling a little bit in terms yeah. of being, being an outlet. Um, whereas actually we as a unit at the moment, we can break with a three comfortably who know each other quite well. Whereas with Werner going, Lukaku going, I feel the Chelsea front three or whoever may be up top might be not as not as well 
bind as R three. So Brothers it'll be are. close. It'll be close. But um, yeah, it's uh, it'll, it'll have shades of last season. But after yeah. four after four matches last season without joy, I'm I know we aren't doing uh, predictions just yet, but I'm gonna. <laughs> Yeah. There, there, I, oh, there no. I go with us. <laughs> oh man, don't say because if we all go for a win, then we're just going to look like mugs, and then that's it. And then, then Ness is going to have us on his channel just looking like idiots. <laughs> um, so who, who is going to be your front three then, Ness? What's the team he's going to play? I, I, I think he learned his lesson from last week, and I don't think he's going to start his illegitimate son, Kai Havertz. He's going to tell him, sorry, I'm going to need to sit on the bench. Your Champions League credit is running low, so you might want to save it a little bit, you know. I think Bruges is going to start this time, finally. Oh, really? Yeah, because he came on and he, he well, he done what I call a Diego Costa approach. He started just being hot and bothersome, running at everyone, trying to show that energy. So maybe, you know, maybe this time we'll give him a start. Obviously, Sterling, he's going to be down the left. I think I think he's he's the whole key to this game, it's mainly from yeah. Chelsea's viewpoint. If he does, if he if he plays well, if he, he could single-handedly do magic. And mm. I don't like relying on that, but it seems we might need to rely on that. And um, I'm not sure what's going to happen with Hudson Odoi. I was, I was hoping that they would kind of force him. You know how do I say it? Yeah, like you either make it or you break. Like I, I want him to kind of force it before the transfer window is over. Just play in two, three games and let him run. Tell him run wild. Like you're a young 21 year old going to the World Cup. You know, just do your thing, or you know, we will learn you. You know, I'll wait. I'll, we should wait till the last day before that decision. But I'm hoping I'll be the starting three. But I mean, if Hudson Odoi is not playing, boy, last week, from what I'm looking at, <laughs> Pulisic played well. I, I, I want to start Pulisic again. And yeah. he's in a similar limelight for me. He has to either play well, or he can't stay at Chelsea till next gen, next summer. He can't. Like he's just not that good. I was hoping we offload him to Liverpool, but they were too wise for that. Yeah, so <laughs> that's that's what I'm hoping starts. But um, okay, obviously well, you guys got the magic for you, man. Yeah, yeah. So well, fingers crossed. That, I mean, we have a Charleston as well who may well be playing. I don't think he's going to be starting. So in terms, of, in terms of the uh, in terms of the starting lineup, do we think um, Lee that it's going to be the same? Is he, do you think he's going to stick with Cessignon and uh, Royale, even though you know they both oh, like, no. Doherty and Perisic got a bit of game time? I'm sure that. Uh, Nez is hoping that we don't play Royale. Um, <laughs> no, Perisic, I mean, we do bring him, bring him in. We do play Royale, to be fair. Um, <laughs> Perisic, I mean, I've taken him out of my fantasy league team. I was just annoyed. No. Um, because I just like, it's just killing me. just killed me. Um, <laughs> I was just like, what's going on? So I still think he's going to keep him on the bench as well. I, don't, I, can't see him yeah. I can't see him changing that team. I don't, I don't think he changes, actually. Um, and I think the only one that was chucked up in the air was actually, uh, was, was Royale for, for Doherty. Um, yeah. there's been kind of murmurs and talks and whispers that Docket is still his number one, is still his go-to. Um, so I, I can't see him changing it just from a pace perspective. Um, so I think we'll start with the same 11 that started on Saturday. Um, and then if if we're in a good position or, or the pace coming down uh, Royale side isn't causing us too much of a problem, then I think you can see Docket introduced later on to shore it up uh, defensively. But I think I think we'll go with the same start in eleven, actually. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to come to you for predictions, then Lee. I'm going to go to you first. Now, obviously, you had a little smirk earlier on, which I'm imagining is means you're going to go for a win. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, do you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to back us. I'm going to back us, and I don't usually against Chelsea. Um, but I'm going to go for I'm going to go for a two-one. I'm going to go for a, a defensive game, uh, quite close, but it's got to be. It's, it's got to come down to moments. A bit like Nez said there, Phil, even for Chelsea, it's got to come down to individual moments, I think. Um, but it'll be a game of breakaways and it's about then converting your chances. So there's my head on the block. I'm going to go for Chelsea mm -hmm. 1, Tottenham 2. OK, strong. Kofi, over to you. Um, I'm joining in. My head's on the block as well. Uh, I'm feeling uh, a 2 one well away win. 2-1 away win. I mean, we can't all go 2-1. Yeah, so. He said defensive 2-1. You think it's going to be a clear, like, 2-0 and then one, we just get one consolation. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm actually going to go... I'm going to go 1-0 Tottenham. Um, I do think it's going to go KG. Um, that's obviously saying we're going to get a clean sheet. But I just think, yeah. yeah. Get I, 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 don't it, 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 I don't know. I'm just... Maybe maybe Nez is influencing me on my opinions here. But I do think it might be a really, really shit game. And it just might be, it could even be 2 0 to be fair, because what, no. if, we get past, 
We could, that would, that would be funny. No, it's two nil. That would be. I'm going to go for one. I'm going to go for one nil. I'm going to go for a Son oh, breakaway goal. Uh, so that's three Tottenham wins we have here. Over to you, Nez, to back up your team. Come on. Yeah, but I'm not even going to lie. I'm not that kind of guy. I was going to go for one one. No fun. So that was Nez's prediction, a one-all draw, and our predictions were 2-1 for Kurtz, 2-1 for Kofi, and 1-0 for Noel, all in favour of Tottenham Hotspur going to Stamford Bridge and winning, which is what we hardly ever, ever do. So, wow. I, I mean, you know, it's one of those times in the season where I think we can still be weirdly confident. It might all change, but... I don't know, you know, this, this this seems to be different. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed it's going to be the case. So um, thank you, everybody, for joining us again. Um, you've enjoyed the show and uh, we look forward to hopefully talking about another three points in the bag next week and uh, watching Nez cry into a video <laughs> and I'll celebrate once again. So um, I'll do some videos and stuff when I go to Stanford Bridge as well um, and I'll do a little report for you. Um, and you can see that next week. So um, look forward to speaking to you and um, talking to you next week, everybody. So um, thanks again to Lee. Thanks again to Kofi. And obviously, thanks again to Nez for coming on. Uh, much appreciated. So look forward to three points on Sunday. And once again, come on, you Spurs. <laughs> <laughs>